This morning, we're going to continue looking at the story of Lot. A couple of weeks ago, we looked at Lot, and, and we looked at how he chose to follow his uncle. Do you, rem- do you remember that? When nobody else did, he continued to follow his uncle because he knew that Abraham was in the right direction, had been called by God, and he chose. He chose. Both Abraham and Lot were men of faith. Were men of faith. And that's why it's hard for me, and if you open your Bibles to Genesis chapter 19, Genesis chapter 19, it's hard to read these words. Genesis chapter 19, verse 30. Genesis chapter 19, verse 30, the Bible says, this is here, Then Lot went up out of Zoar and dwelt in the mountains, and his two daughters were with him. For he was afraid to dwell in Zoar, and he and his two daughters dwelt in a cave. This is after the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. They're out, there is no more Sodom and Gomorrah, there is no more city, so they're out in the mountains. Verse 31 says, Now the firstborn, talking about the daughter, said to the younger, Our father is old, and there is no man on the earth to come into us as is the custom of all the earth. Come, let us make our fathers what? Drink wine, and we will lie with him that, he, that we may preserve the lineage of our fathers. Are you listening to what the Bible is saying? Verse 33, So they made their fathers drink wine that night, and the firstborn went in and lay with her father, and he did not know when she lay down or when she arose. It happened on the next day, verse 34, that the firstborn said to the younger, Indeed, I lay with my father last night. Let us make him drink wine tonight also, and you go in and lay with him that we may preserve the lineage of our father. It's interesting on how we try to rationalize sin. And they made their father drink wine that night also, and the younger arose and lay with him, and he did not know when she laid or when she arose. Thus, verse 36. It's even gross to read it. Thus both the, thus, thus both the daughters of Lot were with child by their father. You don't have to even watch The Young and the Restless and Victor and all that to get... If you like drama, just read the Bible. Just read the scriptures. How on earth does Lot get to this point? You see, Lot is considered a righteous man. If you don't believe me, go to 2 Peter. Join me there, Second Peter, chapter two. Lot was a righteous man. Lot was part of the group that were called the, the sons of God there in Genesis. Second Peter, chapter two, verse six. Second Peter, chapter two, verse six. The Bible says, "And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah." into ashes, condemn them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterwards would live ungodly, and delivered what kind of lot? Righteous lot, who was oppressed with the filthy conduct of the wicked. Verse 8, for that righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. Three times he is called righteous. But notice, 
tormenting his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. Three times he is called righteous. Lot was a descendant of Shem, who was a son of Noah, who was a descendant of Seth, which is part of that group of people who were called the sons of God in Genesis 6-2. They were the worshipers of the true God, not like the descendants of Cain that, that abandoned God and left God and began to worship other idols. Lot was a descendant of a righteous family. And Lot was not forced to follow Abraham. You remember when we studied that, that he chose to follow his uncle. Lot displayed, I would say, the same faith that Abraham did in leaving Ur and leaving and going and following his Abraham to the land of Canaan. How does a person like this end up doing this? And that's what we're going to, to see from God's word because God forbid that we think or do of something that we say we would never do. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord God, open our mind and fill us with your spirit as we open your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you look, open back in Genesis chapter 13, the first point I'd like to point out is that sin works gradually very gradually. Genesis chapter 13, verse 7. Here is a description of Abraham and Lot, and they have so much, they're so wealthy that they need to spread out. Genesis 13, verse 7, the Bible says, then there was strife between the herdsmen of Abram's livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's livestock. The Canaanites and the, Peres and the Perizzites then dwelt in the land. So Abram said to Lot, Please let there be no strife between you and me and between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, for we are brethren. Is not the whole land before you? Please separate from me if you take the left, then I will go to the right. Or if you go to the right, then I will go to the left. What is wrong with these verses? Now, somebody already said it. Anybody else catch it? What's wrong with this verse? Who is the uncle? And who is the nephew? Who should have been showing respect? Who should have said, you know, uncle, no, no, you choose, uncle. Where, look at the land and you choose. And wherever you go, if you go right, I'll go left. If you go left, I'll go right. If you go north, I go south. But who is the one that is saying where to go? It's Abraham. It should have been Lot. It should have been Lot. And that's why you see there in verse 10, Genesis chapter, chapter 13, verse 10, it says, And Lot lifted his eyes and saw all the plains of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere, before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, like the garden of the Lord. Which was the garden of the, of the, of the Lord? By the, by the garden of Eden. Sodom and Gomorrah were so beautiful, like, garden, like the garden of Eden. And he saw that, like the, like the land of Egypt, as you go Toward Zoar. Then Lot chose for who? There we begin to see a little, a little bit of the problem with Lot. He chose for himself all the plains of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated from each other. He was infected with the disease of materialism, of capitalism, of bigger is better. Bigger is better. You do know that a Nissan car will take you just as far as a Rolls Royce does. A Chevy has nice cold air condition just as much as 
Mercedes or any fancy car, a, t a Timex will give you the time just as much as a Rolex does, doesn't it? But Lot was captured with titles, was looking toward, toward Sodom. Instead of giving his uncle the first options, the first places, no, you, you choose first. He chose for himself. He chose for himself. And there in Genesis chapter 13, verse 12, Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the city of the plain, and pitched his tent even as far as Sodom. Was he in Sodom? Not yet. But even as far as Sodom, he pitched his tent. You see, the, the devil knows that he couldn't get Lot into the city right away. But he made it attractive and, and got close to it, even as far as Sodom did. And the devil knows that he's not going to, to have Adventists from one day to the next just sin, just start drinking, or just start smoking, or start going to the clubs at night, or breaking the Sabbath. No, it, it's, it's gradually... It's slowly. First, first maybe, maybe we begin with cooking with wine and then, and then excusing that it's good for the heart or maybe drinking the, the, the little wine coolers. Gradually, gradually. A person doesn't, doesn't leave the church from one Sabbath to the next. It's a gradual slip and slide. Now, how long did it take for Lot to be near Sodom to go into Sodom. The Bible there tells us there in uh, Genesis chapter 19. Genesis chapter 19. This all has, it, it, it's important, especially for us in these last days. Genesis chap chapter 19, verse 1. It says, Now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening. They're about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Praise God for a faithful uncle that looked out for him, and that's why the angels went to go get him. Now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. So he wasn't no longer near as far. He was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground, and and he said, Here now, my Lord, please turn in to your servant's what? Tent? House. Where was Sodom living now? He was in a house. In Sodom. How long did it take him to transition from living a tent to going into Sin City, into the, the heart of Sodom? To the heart of Sodom. Well, when you read Genesis chapter 12, verse 4, Abraham was 75 years old when him and Lot left Haram. And they left toward Canaan. He, Abraham was 75 years old. And then you read in Genesis chapter 21, after Sodom and Gomorrah are destroyed, that Sarah is pregnant with Isaac. And how old was Abraham when, when, when Isaac was born? Do we remember? He was 100 years old. Talk about a happy Father's Day for him. <laughs> 100 years old. How many years is that between 75 and 100? 25 years. It took, took Lot to slip and slide, step by step, lie by lie, get closer and closer to where? To Sodom. To Sodom. You see... Nobody runs towards Sodom. Nobody runs towards sin. And so therefore we think that we're not running toward it, but we're what? We're sliding in that direction. But because we're not running toward it, we think that we're just fine. But we're sliding, and then you, ha you happen to look and see that you're not where you, you, where you used to be. Where you, you used to be. And now he's living 
in Sodom there. 25 years. Satan does not mind that you do what's right as long as you don't stop doing what's wrong. You want to keep the Sabbath? He says, that's fine. You want to return tithes? Keep on returning tithes. But as long as you hold on to something that you don't give up and you still keep doing something wrong. Slowly and slowly he began to move into Sodom. And during those 25 years, God, I believe, gave him a warning. There in Genesis chapter 14, Lot is taken captive. And who comes to rescue Lot? Abraham. I love the story where Abraham just gets about 300 and such and such of his servants. That's how wealthy he was. He could just get his men and says, pick up a sword, we're going to go get my nephew. I know what it's like to have been rescued. So I, I, I can imagine Abraham saying, we're going to go get him. And you see, Abraham, Lot could have looked at that capture in two ways. As a warning from God, you're getting too close to Sodom. You've got to get away as a warning from God. But yet also the devil speaks to us and say, if you would have been in Sodom, you would have never been captured. It's better to have been in the walls of Sodom. And so then we have to listen and think. When our, when our minds is not made up in doing the right things, we will always give Satan a piece of our, our reasoning, of our mind. If your life is not wrapped up in Christ and his words, you can wind up doing anything. Anything, as we saw at the beginning here. Lot did not even know what, know what he had done. But notice here, chapter 19, verse 9. Genesis chapter 19. This here is what did not help Lot while he was in Sodom. Chapter 19, verse 9. No, let's go to, I'm sorry, verse 8. The angels are come in, right? The men see, the men in the city see the angels and they want to do wrong, perverse things with the angels. And what does Lot say in verse 8? See, now I have two daughters who have not known a man. Please let me bring them out to you and you may do to them as you wish. Only do nothing to these men since this is the reason they have come under the shadow of my roof. Verse 9. And they said to him, Stand back. Then they said, This one came in to sojourn. Lot. This one came in from the outside. And now we will, and he keeps acting as what? As judge. Now we will deal worse with you than with them. That sentence right there. The men of Sodom, what are they telling Lot? Get back. You've come in from the outside, sojourning, come into our city, and you've been acting as a judge among us. Who are you to judge us? You see, Lot had been trying to do what is right, but participating in what is bad. Just by the fact that he says, hey, take my daughters. Knock yourself out. Do whatever, they, do whatever you want with them. Knows that he had been infected. He had compromised. And because of that compromise, because of that compromise, the men here say, this one came into sojourn from outside and he keeps acting as judge. You keep acting as a judge like if you're different. 
You may have not, you may, weren't, maybe were not born here. You may not worship the same God we worship, but you like going to the places we like to go. You like going to the clubs that we like to go, watching the same things we like to do. What are you doing judging us? The good we say around sinners doesn't count by the compromises sinners see us make. I'm going to say that again. The good that we say or we preach around sinners does no good, does not count by the compromise that they see in us that we make. Did, the, did you hear me? You may have a, uh, friends who are not Seventh-day Adventists. They know that Saturday the day you go to church and that you don't eat certain things. But yet, they also know that you laugh at their dirty jokes. They also know that you watch the same dirty movies that they watch. Or maybe you're dating somebody who is not an ambitist, and they know what you believe, but yet you still do things and compromise. You may break the Sabbath, you may even lay with them all in the name of love, and are compromising your witness. If you're, if you're, one of my favorite examples is, if you're one of those persons that likes to tell others how to eat, and they shouldn't be eating this, and they should become vegans, and I'm, I am a faith believer in our health message, amen. But yet, you preach, but then these same people who that you're preaching to see you going into Brahms, going into Whataburger, pigging out at our dessert aisles that we have here. Friends, your testimony kills your preaching. Amen. If you suffer with, with, with high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol, first reverse those things through the health message, and then you have something to say. Amen. Amen. Our testimonies kill what we're trying to share. We cannot witness to Jesus with mud on our feet, with a tail between our legs. Here, these men are telling Lot, you've been trying to act as a judge. You're just one of us. Don't tell us we can't go in and do what we want with these two men. We don't want your daughters. We want the men. Don't tell us what we can't do. If we are going to be witnesses in these last days, friends, we must stop standing on both sides. We got to stop it. Notice I said we and not you. We all have to stop it. You see, our ch children, our children, they know what we watch. They know what we listen to. They know what we say. And then we wonder why they're not spiritual. They see that we don't come to Sabbath school. We don't study our quarterly lesson. We don't come to a prayer meeting, and then we wonder why they're not spiritual. We may tell them, you need to read your Bible. But what do they, what testimony are we giving to them? What testimony? They're getting a mixed message. A mixed message. That's why they're in Genesis chapter 19. Genesis chapter 19, Lot is indecisive when he needs to be decisive. Look at verse 15. Genesis chapter 19, verse 15. The angels are trying to get Lot and his family out. Genesis chapter 19, verse 15, it says, When the morning dawned, the angels urged Lot to hurry. And saying, Arise, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you be consumed in the punishment of the city. 
And while he lingered, and we already talked about this, he lingered, the men took hold of his hand and wife and of his wife's hand and the hands of his two daughters, and the Lord being merciful to him, praise the Lord. And they brought him out and set him outside the city. The angels were urging him, Arise. Lot was indecisive. Well, 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 wait, wait, let me go get my stuff. Well, well, wait, I need to come. There's no time. There is, friends, there is going to come a time. There is going to come a time when you study Bible prophecy where the angels will no longer wait. Where the Spirit of God will be gone. There will come a time where the angels will no longer wait and urge you. Right now, they are urging while we are lingering. There will come a time when the angels will not wait. So that's why the Bible says, today if you hear, do not harden your heart. If you hear the voice of God calling you, don't harden your heart. Some say, well, yes, once I get more time off from work, then I can study again and, and then consider baptism. You have, we don't even have this afternoon guaranteed. Much less next week or next month. The Bible is filled with urgency today if you hear his voice. Today, we will serve the Lord. At some point, at some point, friends, we have to try something new. And that is giving up sin altogether. Altogether. Stop giving mixed messages. Stop giving bad testimonies that kill our preaching. Kill our preaching. We need to do what we say. We need to do what we say. Lot, within 25 years, got closer and closer and closer, but finally compromised, getting into Sodom, and compromised there. The Bible doesn't say all that he compromised, but there was compromise. Just the fact that he offered his daughters showed that there was compromise. That he didn't want to leave. Wait, 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 wait. Why do you think his wife looked back? Her heart was still there. And that's why Jesus tells us, remember Lot's wife. And we can, we can also even say, remember Lot. Remember Lot. Because of his compromise, he shouldn't have even have been drinking at all when his daughters offered it to him. At all. It would have avoided him becoming a father and a grandfather at the same time. It would have avoided the mess that we are in right now with the, the, with the two nations that came from those children. We need to be careful. And we need to do what we say. And as a parent, and I appeal to all the fathers here, that you take very, very, very serious what your children see, what they hear in you. Because we can say one thing, but when they grow up, they can, they, can, they can answer just how these men answer. What? Why are you judging me? I saw you this and this and this and this and this and this. So how many of us, how many of us, I know I am the first one in line need to reevaluate, need to double check 
our testimonies line up with our words, with our preaching. Is there anyone else besides myself? Amen. Friends, Jesus is coming very soon. Sooner than what you think. And I just pray and appeal to you. There is this, this compromising has to end. It has to end. Our compromise kills our preaching. As a Seventh-day Adventist church, we've compromised. And it's killed our, our testimony with other churches. But even personal compromise can kill your testimony with your neighbor, with your family, with your uncle, with your niece. They know that, I, they know that I'm a Seventh-day Adventist, but yet they see me breaking the Sabbath. The message will not get to them, friends. And that's why Jesus says that all the world in, in, in Matthew 24, that the preaching is going to go into all the world as a testimony, and then the end will come. As a testimony. The testimony is what we need to pray and do not compromise. And so I pray that as this hymn says, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. And I appeal that you evaluate your heart, you evaluate your habits as we seek God, as we seek to not compromise, as we seek to honor Him in everything that we do. And that's why I change at the last minute the scripture reading, which is found in Proverbs chapter 20, verse 6 and 7. Most men will proclaim each his own goodness. Yes. But who can find a faithful man? The righteous man walks in his integrity. Then his children are blessed after him because we walk not just saying of our own goodness, but we walk with integrity by doing what we're saying. Amen? Amen. Friends, don't feel overwhelmed because we can do all things through Christ because he gives us the strength. And claim that promise in Philippians. Claim that promise. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, thank you so very much because you are merciful to us. You were merciful to Lot and his family. And I know that you are merciful to us today. And you are urging, you are pleading, you are calling. And we say one thing and we may do another thing. Forgive us, Lord, for giving mixed messages to our children, for giving mixed messages to our family members, or even here amongst the church or our neighbors. Lord, help us to stay in that straight and narrow way, looking unto you and not anyone else. And help us, because we can do all things through your Son, who gives us the strength. Bless your church, and bless us on this holy day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I invite you to open your hymn books to hymn number 522. My hope is built on nothing less. 522. And please stand as, as you find it. As we sing, On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. 522. 